Well guys, welcome back to the channel. It's a fun video here today. Surprise number one has been revealed. Obviously you clicked on the thumbnail, so you're gonna, you know what it is about. Kinsey has brought down a 3605 1223 planter. Well, it's for soybeans for us this year, but you can obviously plant corn with it. We'll run through some of those specifications a little bit later, but if it happens to be the first time that you guys are here, welcome. My name is Ben. This is the Iowan Farmer YouTube channel, and where have you been on my entire life? I'm, I'm kidding with you. Anyways, the channel follows us around on the oddball things that I try and get done, and I uh, happen to review blueberry donuts every now and then too. Just to give you guys a forewarning, we will not be planting in this video, but we are getting close to actually getting some soybeans in the ground. Dad and Andrew are actually getting some soybeans treated today as we get basically the tractor ready to go for the planter. So that is why the Kinsey Repowered 8630 has been sitting right there uh, because that is gonna be getting hooked up to the 3600, the 1223, 1224 bean planter uh, to be planting with that as well. So hopefully we'll be running two bean planters this year and maybe test out what the capabilities of a, a newer modern planter is compared to a, a box fill spring down forest planter. Uh, see if we can, who can get more acres done in a day while still doing a good job. It'd be a lot of fun to see that 8630 on a beam planter. Uh, don't ask us a whole lot of times. If you would, hit the thumbs up button, take a second here, and we'll run through what we had to do to this tractor right now uh, because as a, the bean planter got delivered. We learned that that planter actually has the capability. Well, we didn't learn, I learned that it had the planter had the capability to actually do hydraulic and ground drive, which is a question that I wanna learn a little bit more about. Uh, so I ended up getting a Power Beyond put onto the John Deere 8110. Because the 8110 is gonna be what's pulling. The 3605. So I didn't have the right amount of remotes, hence, the Power Beyond. I think you could run it with four remotes if you happen to have four remotes. We'll, we'll learn more about this stuff. Learn it as I go, kind of with you guys. So we've got a pretty good shot of tech that we've got to get installed into the 8110. Uh, the full box, this is uh, very similar to anything that you've, you've ever seen on the Kinsey. Uh, the actual row shutoff uh, switches. The in command will be getting put into there. And then uh, the pneumatic downforce control. Because on this planter, it has pneumatic downforce and row clutches. Very similar to uh, how we're doing it with the 3800, the 24 row, 30 inch corn planter that you guys have seen in the past few videos. We should be able to monitor just like that with the in command this year versus I've had the in command in the 8110 pulling the 3600 for numerous years. And I don't know what we'll be putting in this for tech upgrades. It might go back to an Integra. Uh, could put an in command 800 in there. Steering is going to be my piece of my puzzle I'm trying to figure out. This will be working the same way that I've done it in the past, which just basically the KPM2, which there's that full box and the KPM2 is hanging out right over there. That's what's monitored the planter. So I never monitored the planter on the Integra or on the in command. All it did was uh, pretty much steer and then map where I was planting the hybrids, which worked because then when we went to harvest, I had the harvest file and so you could tell when you changed the hybrids and the soybeans, things along that if in case you were wanting to compare and contrast, things like that. So it worked. It was a simplified way to collect some data and steer your tractor. However, before we dive into getting this installed, it sounds like part of our sprayer operation upgrade. I uh, just got the phone call. Is getting delivered here, so we need to go unload it. Yeah, so Dad and I, uh, Got ourselves a handler three, two inch, 70 gallon. It's actually a little surprised I got to add the splurge on that thing with me. Those things aren't cheap. Bang. What I'm excited about is that it has this uh, jug blade in it. I've been wanting that for years, years. So back to the technology right after our product specialist, some lunch. You gotta keep those guys fed, otherwise they're 
they, their special runs a little low. So after lunch, Justin's made it down here. He's trying yes. to he's trying to find me. Uh, apparently, we got like a deer adapter motor return, and we don't have the right one. That's what I thought was possibly the case drain for the zero pressure return. I was wrong, uh, definitely wrong. But he's helping me work through our wiring, what we're installing here. Egg leader in command 1200, the switch box, the pneumatic downforce, the fold box, and then we also had to run 12 volts right there to the back, and that will be going to the planter. So the technology's kind of in there. Sorry we didn't film much of that. It's, there's, there's not a whole lot of fun that comes into running wires around, guys. Figured out that basically we took a port off of here and we need to go grab that port for the case drain. But before I take off to town, let's uh, look at this handler three. Just lift this thing up. Oh, you do just lift this thing up. So here it is, this is a 70 gallon handler three. Hand, yep, handler three. Our inductor on our sprayers, or on our sprayer trailer is not doing so hot. So, this is a major upgrade here. You got the two inch plumbing. So you come in here, I believe, uh, then you can either come and induct it down through the Venturi or you can, which if you send it through the Venturi, it can pull from the cone or if you send it through this uh, here, you can actually hook up uh, a manifold and then that manifold can pull from like many bulks. I'd really be interested in doing that. I just have not 100% uh, figured out a way that I would make that work or not. So if you guys know anything about metering and using that thing, that stuff, I'd like to know. Uh, need to have like a meter, some way to maybe connect two or three mini bulk tanks together uh, to pull from, from different chemicals. That'd be awesome. And then you can obviously bypass it we stayed with the two inch. You could get a three inch option, it sounds like, but we stayed with the two inch because the older Haggy is a two inch plumbing and we go along with it. Like I said earlier, we do have the chem blade here. That is a good deal. I mean, I can't wait to just put the jugs on there. Not have to mess with them. Uh, and then I believe it has like a little whirly for rinse in here. You can turn this pipe on here to mix for AMS. And then you also have the option for this guy right here, which that would be just, if you want to turn around and put a, like a garden hose style deal on there. That's gonna make spraying and mixing chem batches so much easier. So technology's in there. I gotta run the town and grab a fitting. Justin took off. Uh, we'll go grab that fitting, maybe change it. And then uh, we'll go do a quick walk around to the, the 1223. So it looks like we needed actually the part that I already had and didn't have at the same time. On the back end of this tractor, what's gonna be on getting plugged in now, I it had three remotes. So to run the 3605, we're gonna have the three remotes. The bottom two, which is remote number one, should be running my lift. Um, and then probably remote two will be running the uh, fold and marker functions. And then mark th uh, remote three will go into constant flow and run the hydraulic drives. What we'll be running the air seed delivery system is the power beyond that was added to this tractor. Uh, this one should be the pressure side. This one will be the return side. That's why it's got an R on it. And then what I thought was like a case drain that was added, and this is my right, uh, I'm, uh, it's my, my fault, I guess, was this guy. But this one is something that is used to basically have a pressure load kind of deal uh, to activate the power beyond, if that makes sense. But since it sounds like we're going to be running one of these remotes in constant flow, that will activate the power beyond, which will make things work. The other issue, the issue that we had left was is that I need to have a case drain uh, to uh, drain all the motors so the motor seals don't go out. We've got to add basically another one of these a little bit lower. That took me all day to figure out, by the way. Just, just felt like I played Pictionary all day long trying to figure out what I was talking about because I didn't know. So yep, 
here she is tucked into the shed here um, sitting next to the 3600 uh, like i said it's going to be really interesting to see both of these should be running this spring see the difference in between the two how they're going on but we'll go over the specifications in greater detail when we get this guy hooked up but 3605 12 23 which means 12 rows on the back 23 would be all the 15 inch rows so there's 11 rows on the front to make it the 1223 air seat delivery has the scales has row clutches um center pivot deal just like the other bean planner uh same same concept we have airbag downforce or pneumatic downforce on the machine it has both the ground drive and, and also a reason why we're not doing an in-depth review or look over of this is because it's in the shed and the shed has no lights but it does also have the hydraulic drive option excited to get it hooked up it'll be here in the next couple videos like i said 86 30 is going on to the 3600 we'll have 60 feet of bean planting capacity this year let's get to work so thanks for hanging out with this guys if you haven't yet don't forget hit the thumbs up button on the way out not gonna want to miss some of this stuff Surprise number one has been revealed. Surprise number two will be coming up soon. And if I haven't happened to mention yet on the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, uh, we are still doing that fundraiser for Jet. Uh, clipping along, uh, I think we're over $2,000 in between the GoFundMe page and personal stuff. Actually, we'd be technically be closer to $2,500. Anyways, if you would help, want to help out with the fundraiser for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, we'll be do, continuing on with that for the rest of the planting season. And we'll see you guys in the next one.